that's the most important and exciting idea is that we can make people live healthier for longer. And I think when you start talking about, um, you know, brain uploading and stuff, that can really turn people off. And actually, I, I don't feel like that's the most important thing the field can do. I think the idea of escape velocity is more interesting than the slightly sci-fi name can sometimes make it sound and less sci-fi because um, if you think about the, if you think about the history of medicine this is a concept that isn't entirely alien right so the idea that if you live longer because of the first round of anti-aging treatments you could then give scientists more time to develop the next round of anti-aging treatments and live even longer um, we don't know if that's going to shoot off to infinity and you know get us all to this thing called longevity escape velocity but it certainly means that people who are alive today can potentially look forward to significantly enhanced healthy lifespans and the reason I say it's not sci-fi is this is exactly what happened. If you imagine you were a kid born in the 1930s or 1940s, at that time in human history, we had dramatically suppressed infectious disease. We had things like vaccines and antibiotics arrived in the 1940s. Um, so we were much more able to treat these infectious diseases. And not, not just from a medical point of view, but also things like sanitation and hygiene, you know, sort of the sort of more basic approaches. And because of this dramatically increased risk of death uh, in childhood, you might have survived your childhood. And then you go on you know, living the rest of your life for decades and decades. And then as we go through the 1950s and 1960s and 1970s, cardiac care really got revolutionized. And we developed things like statins in the 1980s and 1990s that can lower your cholesterol and reduce your heart disease risk as you get older. Um, we developed cancer drugs, which obviously wouldn't have existed in the 1940s. And so by living longer as a result of those medical interventions made when you were younger, you were able to live longer still when you got to older age. And those medical interventions, the new ones, were around to save your life you know when you got there and so i think this idea that we could extend our lives substantially by continually building on progress and living long enough to benefit from it that's actually one of the reasons i find you know the sort of basic health advice that we talked about right at the top of the chat um really fascinating and exciting because if i can keep myself as healthy as possible for as long as possible that buys scientists more times to develop sorry more time to develop more treatments and if i can then live a bit longer as a result of those treatments and keep on exercising and keep on eating well and so on i could live a little bit longer scientists develop the next round of treatments which i can then benefit from and because these things aren't you know hundreds of years away they're, they're going to be coming in the next few decades it's very much down to how much can we raise awareness of this stuff and how much we can can we increase the research funding get these clinical trials happening fast enough to matter to the majority of people alive today and so that's where i think the real story is in aging biology